You've probably made slime before, but have you ever made slime that could do this? Or maybe this? Or even this? Join me, will you, while we make a little self-siphoning slime. The very first thing we need to make our slime is acetone. In other words, nail polish remover. Just be sure it's 100% acetone. 25 milliliters of the acetone should suffice, and we're gonna transfer it carefully to a clean, dry beaker. In you go. Next, we need approximately four grams of polyethylene oxide, or polyox for short. Now that we've masked out our polyox, we're gonna carefully pour it into the acetone that we've prepared in our beaker. Once the polyox is in there, we're gonna give it a very gentle swirl. This is very important. We wanna make sure each individual particle of that powder is coated in the acetone. This is gonna help us avoid any lumps or clumps later on in our slime. In a second beaker, we need 400 milliliters of H2O. Tap water will work just fine for this experiment. And to make it a little more interesting, you can add food coloring or watercolor paint. I'm gonna use purple. A drop or two will do. We're ready to add our colorful water to the beaker that contains our polyox and acetone. It's very important though that this is done in one foul swoop, just like so. Once all the water's in, give it a good mix. We're gonna be sure we continue to mix until we've achieved that classic oozy slime consistency. To ensure that our slime is ready to self-siphon, we're gonna pour it back and forth between our two beakers a bunch of times. The time has come to self-siphon. Here we go. We're gonna tilt the beaker ever so slightly so we start to pour that slime. What you'll notice though is it'll start to speed up all on its own as the slime pulls itself out. Getting self-siphoning slime to pour on its own is a skill that requires a bit of patience. So, when you start to pour the slime into the empty beaker, do so slowly. And what you'll notice and kind of feel is that slime increasing the speed of the pour all on its own without you adjusting the angle of your beaker. And the majority of it will pour out of that beaker all on its own. You may have to adjust the angle of that beaker a little bit at the end to get the rest of it to come out. But the slime should be doing the majority of the work. And once you get the hang of it, you can go back and forth between the two beakers as many times as you'd like. Why in the world does this happen, you may be wondering? Well, it has to do with the polyethylene oxide which happens to be a polymer. Now polymers, they're gigundum molecules. Case in point, polyox has a molecular weight of four million, give or take. While water, it just has a molecular weight of 18 grams and carbon dioxide, CO2, 44 grams. You see the difference, how big we're talking here? Now the catch is, any polymer is made up of teeny tiny molecules connected together. Those teeny tiny molecules are what's known as a monomer. And the monomer in our particular polymer happens to have an ether functional group embedded in it. Ethers, they can't undergo what's called hydrogen bonding with other ethers. However, they can create hydrogen bonds when they interact with water. So when we poured that water into our beaker in one foul swoop earlier, a whole plethora of hydrogen bonds wound up forming between our water molecules and our molecules of polyethylene oxide. This allowed for a process called cross-linking to occur. And during this process, our polymer chains actually were able to become even larger while simultaneously becoming intertwined forming a web of our elongated polymer chains, if you will. This structure gave our slime two vitally important properties. You see, our slime is highly viscous. In other words, it resists the urge to flow, just like molasses. This is due to those very strong hydrogen bonds causing the molecules in our slime to wanna stick to themselves. So initially, we do have to start 
pouring our slime because it's going to resist the urge to freely move from that beaker. But once we get it going, elasticity takes over. You see, our slime also has the ability to stretch and snap back together. This is due to the hydrogen bonds that cause the intertwining of our large polymer molecules. It will allow that slime to stretch out of that full beaker and then start to pull the rest of those molecules down into the empty beaker along with it. If you're curious what this looks like at a molecular level, all you need is a strand of beads. You simply get them started and they will have the same self-siphoning action as our slime. Not only does our slime self-siphon, but due to its viscoelasticity, it has some other pretty cool tricks as well. For example, if we pour our slime slowly into the empty beaker, creating a real thin string of our slime, we're actually able to cut it with a pair of scissors. Or we could give it a good mix. What you might notice is as you mix the slime with your mixing utensil, it actually climbs up the mixing utensil, just like bread dough would if you used an electric stand mixer to knead it. I hope a little learning has occurred here and you have a fantastic day. Mm -hmm.